Hi, I got asked quite frequently by you if I could give you kind of a recommendation of which telephoto lens to get for your type of photography, depending on where you live, what kind of subjects you take picture of. Maybe also important how much money you want to spend and how much weight you are willing to carry around. And today I have a lot of lenses from Nikon with me and more importantly Nicolas who has used quite some of these lenses yeah, quite extensively I would say over the past months to years. And we want to give you an overview. Um, we don't want to go into all the specific uh, technical details. It's more about what is relevant in the field, um, some considerations of which lens to buy, the advantages and disadvantages of them. So we made three broad categories. Uh, here you can see the most inexpensive lenses below 3000 euros. Here we have the mid range between three and I think 7000 euros and these two cost a bit more. And these prices are kind of the official recommendations from Nikon. So depending on where you live, uh, at which shop you buy, and at which time you might have some better offers. So yeah, just uh, let's start at the first with the first lens. Uh, so we choose chose the 70 to 180 uh, aperture 2.8, and I think if you think of wildlife lenses, this might be a bit too short. Yeah. Uh, but generally, like maybe for alpine ibex, for example. This might be a, an interesting option. I mean, you, you can tell because you actually used this lens before it was officially released this, uh, well, earlier this year, and you made some quite cool images with the lens. Yeah, so basically I've photographed mainly with the 180 to 600 during this assignment, but I also used the 70 180 uh, for a bit. And it's like, it's kind of like the 70 to 200, which we will be talking about later, but it's just, a bit lighter, a bit smaller, and also a bit cheaper. Yeah, I think it costs around 1,200 euros. Again, depending on where you live, maybe. And one thing to mention, because it's not a S-line lens, you can see that it's not an internal zoom, so the tubus is kind of extending, which might compromise weather sealing a bit. Um, but I think overall, still a very good build quality. I mean, I've, I've used it in the snow, uh, which then melted uh, when I got back in the car. And I didn't have any problems, so I wouldn't really uh, doubt the weather sealing that much, but obviously still, uh, especially if like from the extending tubus, um, yeah, maybe be a bit careful if it's really uh, raining heavily, but otherwise, also like from the image quality, obviously there's a bit of a step up to the 70 to 200, but still I was quite happy with it. Yeah. in general. And I think one advantage of this lens is the quite nice magnification that you can get. So uh, the near minimum focal distance, uh, focus distance is I think um, 85 centimeters and you can get a kind of a magnification of one to two. So yeah. it's not completely macro lens like for small things, but for uh, dragonflies, butterflies, amphibians, reptiles, if you can get close enough, this can be a very nice option. So overall, I think it's Kind of like a, a nice option as a, as a second lens um, so if you have like another telephoto lens uh, but don't want to spend like another couple of thousand uh, dollars or, or euros this might be the, the best option yeah. for you but i wouldn't go for it as like a first first no, lens uh, i think i agree we can maybe go to the bigger brother right the 70 yeah. to 200 this time it's from the S-Line. I have used this a bit. Um, this time I was taking pictures of, well, not Ibex, it was Shamoa, but it was also in the snow. Uh, I had no problem with the weather sealing. Um, and I really like the 70 to 200 for some more environmental shots. If you can get a bit closer to the subject, you can include more of the environment and still have a background that is kind of, well, it helps to give some context. At the same time with f2.8, it's not distracting from the main image. I think for this it's a very nice lens. Yeah, exactly. I mean, do the 20 millimeters really matter? I don't think so. No. Um, if I use one of these lenses, it's more for the wide end, so I don't really care about this, this difference of 20 millimeters. Um, the, however, costing twice as much, this might matter to you. And it's also noticeably heavier and bigger. Yeah, I mean, if you, 
if you want it as a second second lens, uh, don't have that much space left in your backpack. I think it it can matter that this one is a bit shorter and also a bit lighter. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can use both also on teleconvergers. Yeah. Actually, all of the lenses can be used with both the 1.4 and the 2x exactly, yeah. leg standard. Um, but I guess like comparing the two, the 70 to 200 um, works a bit better with the teleconvergers. But I just wanted to mention that yeah. you can use both and obviously you can then extend the reach a bit more. But generally, I, I wouldn't really go for, for teleconverters with these lenses just because I, will, I, I use them for, for different purposes. So One small interesting detail that I find kind of funny is that they have this small display on the 70 to 200. Um, only this one and the 100 to 400 have it. Yeah. Um, I think Nikon just dropped this idea later. Um, you can display here the f-stop, the distance that you have the focus set, and the focal length, yes, right? These exactly. three things, you have a small button to change between these, but this is something I just wanted to say, I don't miss it on the other lens, but yeah. <laughs> it's a small detail. Okay, so we can go maybe to the next one, I would say. Uh, should we go with the 100 to 400? Yes, yeah, sure. So, a bit longer, and uh, it's also noticeably heavier. I think it's around 1.4 kilograms, so similar actually to, than the 70 to 200 uh, 2.8, the S-line, the bigger one that we just had in our hands. Um, but it seems a bit larger from the diameter, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, it's also an S-lens, it has the different uh, two uh, function buttons where you can program basically whatever function you want in the lens. I don't know how much you use them. Uh, basically not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Um, I think it's again, I mean, now we are going from 100 to 400 millimeters, so it's getting probably more usable for general wildlife photography, but still it can be rather on the short end without a tele extender. So I think for many people it could still be a, like a secondary lens, like a one that complements the like a bigger telephoto lens. Or how do you see this? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like from all these lenses, probably the 100 to 400 is my least favorite. That's just because even though you have quite a lot of flexibility, it's just the, the aperture is not as, as bright, mm -hmm. right? So for me, it's not about like the, how much light the lens can, can catch. It's more about like the, the background separation. Yeah. So I feel like with 70 to, to 200 or the 70 to 180, it's just it, the, the, the image has kind of a different look. Yeah which I prefer over the, the look from the 100 to 400. I'm not speaking about image quality. This no, lens is, is it, stellar yeah. from, from image quality, but it's just more about like which images I can create. And uh, for this purpose, I prefer like the 70 to 200 as a, as a, second, as a second lens. Yeah, I, I also I feel in a similar way. I just need to say since I upgraded to my 600 millimeter, I felt that there was kind of a big gap between the 70 to 200 and 600 millimeters. Uh, of course, you can use a tele extender, which helps a bit, but there is still a huge gap. And I think in these situations, I was actually quite happy about having something a bit longer. But again, this might depend a bit on your style of shooting. If you just want a second lens that you maybe use when you leave the big one at home, then I think obviously this one is the better choice yeah. of these two. Okay, so. I would say the next one is the one you spent quite some time with this spring. Yeah, so this one is the 180 to 600. Um, so especially compared to the 100 to 400, you just have a bit more reach on the longer end. But you can also see like uh, from from packing packing size, this one is quite a bit longer. So for your backpack, you just need to calculate a, a bit more space. Uh, it's obviously, also 600 gram heavier. It's also heavier. Uh, if you then photograph on the long end, that the 400 millimeter extends, so then it's a bit longer again. But you can, can make it a bit smaller if you, if you don't want to photograph. This one is always uh, this long, but then again, it's an internal zoom, which has uh, many other uh, advantages. Mainly, I think it's just uh, the weather sealing. This lens isn't an S-line, so you might think it isn't as, as good in the weather ceiling, but uh, I've used it extensively in snow, in rain, 
have written, have had no uh, real real problems with it. So basically, you only went when there was snow because you were not allowed to be seen with the lens, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I had to because when I was testing this lens, it wasn't announced, so I had to to go uh, to places where I didn't see any people, uh, and that was mostly the case when it was like real shitty weather. So yeah, I've tested this lens in in bad weather conditions, and it held up really nicely. Um, and it also works great like from an image quality standpoint. I was really surprised by it. Uh, I'm used to like the exceptional image quality from like the 400 to 8. And I've, I mean there is still there like is a, a, a step up to, to like the more expensive lenses. But it's really uh, astonishingly small I think. Yeah. Now I've also used this a bit later this year. Um, and I was very happy. I think it's in general an easy recommendation, I would say, for people that start into wildlife photography. Yeah. Um, they are willing to spend a bit of money. This is around uh, 2,000 euros, so it's also not cheap cheap, but compared to other lenses, quite inexpensive. You get a very good image quality. Um, again, also the autofocus and the image stabilizer, they're not on par with these very expensive lenses, but it's still performing very good. And I think it's just a very nice all-around lens because with 600 millimeters, you get already quite some reach. If you want more, you can use the tele extender. I was quite happy with the 1.4 overall, but I also need to say really in a dark forest, uh, it was getting a bit trickier also with the autofocus. Um, so I would mainly use the tele extender if you have enough light and if you just want to have a close-up of a bird, like sometimes going for a portrait or something, don't use it in a dark forest, I would say. And personally, I would also not use it. It's a common thing that we discussed a lot about already in the past. Don't try to use the tele extender for the deer that is 100 meters away and is too far away. That's, I think, the wrong use of a yeah, tele extender. I, think, I would say the teleconverters, especially for this lens, they mostly work like for a creative purpose. Yeah. So they don't really, I mean, the 1.4 can work if the subject is a bit further away. But especially like the two, uh, the two times teleconverter, it's more just for really niche purposes. Like like you said, like a, a really tight close up. Then it can work also from the image quality. I mean, it's it takes a bit of a hit, uh, which is to be expected. But um, yeah, if you want like a really nice nice detail image of, of feathers or like the head of the bird, it can can be quite useful. But I wouldn't recommend uh, like walking around with it all the time. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And I think overall this is really this nice all-rounder zoom if this is your main lens. I think again if you already have a super telephoto, personally I think I would not get it because it's too large if you want to have it in your backpack aside with another one and it feels a bit redundant. I mean I would not have a 600mm f4 and have this in my backpack. If I only take one of the two this could be a nice addition. Otherwise, I think I would really go for one of the yeah. shorter focal lengths. But I guess, like, if you if you don't really know what to photograph and I, you can't really ca uh, carry the, the the large 600 millimeters, this is basically. The then one. I agree. Yeah. If you if you only take one, then t then yeah. this is the best out of these here. I would say for general. Yeah. So purpose. I guess, like, if you're starting out in bird photography, this is kind of a, a no-brainer. Yeah. We have another lens here, um, a bit more expensive. It's uh, around 3,000 uh, euros. And this was really a, like uh, a complete surprise. I got this the first time when I was testing the Z9 before I tested this one. And it was more to get used to the Z9 actually, the autofocus system and everything. And I really, I really like the lens. It's, uh, it's so lightweight. It's um, I think a bit below 1.3 kilograms if you take off the foot and I actually took it off. Yeah. I prefer the handling. It just fits very well in the hand. You have the lens function button. I mean, this one I find very hard to reach, but the one up here is very nice. Um, you have the memory set here, um, which is amazing because I used it also sometimes for some flying seagulls. So you can uh, set the like pre-focus on a specific distance. This is very easy to reach to set it. And with this one, I was recalling it. I don't know, it was just a super fun lens to use. Extremely sharp. Yeah, I don't know what if you have something to add I mean here. I've, I think you, you kind of mentioned it already, like for, for birds in flight, this is like a, a really cool option. Because, I mean, the lens is already quite lightweight, but the weight is also quite fur, far back, so near to the camera. So if you're like panning with a, with a bird, which is really agile, 
you can really easily move move with it. Yeah, and don't underestimate this for bird and fly pictures. It's so much easier also just with a shorter focal length and with a physically short lens. Yeah. So for this, it's quite a, quite a nice lens. But in general, I think if you want to like travel uh, lightweight with a small size, this is kind of a, the, the perfect option. Yeah. And you can also use it really nicely with the teleconverters. So I think you've used it with the 1.4 Yeah, only the 1.4 and there I felt like an image quality, there was basically no drop. I mean, with the 180 to 600, I saw a difference. It was not huge, but I saw one. And here I had the feeling it's, it was really hard to tell if I was just looking at a picture. I zoomed into one to one. I still had trouble saying if it was with the tele extender yeah. or without. Yeah, so I've used it with the two times teleconverter. And I've, I have to say, I was, I was really happy with it. Uh, basically, like to, if you, if you cycle around, if you have a small backpack, you still have 800 millimeters in a really small size. At f9 so, then, yeah. Which is still okay at 800 millimeters. Yeah. I mean, it's still uh, not like on this level, but it's still a rather shallow depth of field, yeah, to be exactly. honest. So if, like, if it size and, and weight is more important than flexibility, I think this one is, is, yeah. is a really nice option uh, for these kind of lenses. In, in this I would class. probably not buy this as my only lens, um, just because you are a bit limited to just these 400 millimeters or you use an extender. So I think for my style, I could imagine buying this and then I would maybe complement it with yeah. the 70 to 200 or even the 70 to 180 that we mentioned in the beginning. I think this is kind of a nice combination. Yeah, so you've mentioned that 400 millimeters might be a bit too short for you. So then let's go to the next lens, Yes. which is a similar size, uh, similar in weight, but 600 millimeters. Um, recently uh, came out, so I think just like a week or two ago. So one thing to mention just here, we don't have the lens hood. Um, we were not provided with one, but the lens actually ships with the lens hood like all the other lenses. I think that's just an important thing. Yeah. And otherwise, it's quite similar in the 400 millimeter 4.5 in terms of uh, how it's built. I mean, it's also... I mean, there's one big difference. So ah, this yeah. is a, a PF lens, so a face Fresnel lens. Uh, this one is not. So that's just one thing to, to keep in mind. One question. Did you ever saw something in the bokeh that was different, like in some special backlit situations? Because as far as I know, that's one of the... Basically, the yeah. only downside I mean, that you could have, I right? I can't speak for this one because I haven't really yeah. had time to test it. But with the 800 millimeters, I never really noticed yeah. anything. So I think it shouldn't be a problem, actually. Yeah. I think they also improved a lot in, yeah. compared to many years ago. Exactly. Yeah, so one, one other thing I think is, is worth mentioning is just the lens compared to the 400 millimeters is a bit more front heavy. Um, Obviously, that's kind of the compromise I think they, they had to make to, to get these uh, extra 200 millimeters. But still, I mean, it's, it's really light. It's exceptionally light, like for this size and Is for this like focal length. 1.6 kilos or? I think it's like at around 1.4 kilos. 1.4, okay, so even lighter. So then the difference to this one is like 150 grams or yeah. something. So not a big difference, but it really feels a bit heavier yeah, because exactly. all the weight is here. And the other one in the 404.5 is really behind. But in the backpack, you won't feel this difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, then also like the, the aperture. Yes, it's only 6.3. But then again, I mean, just for, for, for this size and this weight, actually, like I prefer a 6.3 over a 5.6 because then again, I would expect it to be much, much uh, bigger and more similar to like yeah. the next lens that we'll yeah. talk soon about. No, and I know quite some uh, people that were more into birding that were like really excited about this lens because it offers 600 millimeter, 6.3, you still get a decent separation from the background and it's so lightweight. I think one small thing that we should mention compared to the 400 millimeter 4.5 is the price. Um, this one is around 5,700, 5,800 yeah, euros, roughly. I think. Um, so it's quite a steep increase compared to the 400 millimeter 4.5 that is uh, like only 3,000 euros. But then let's go to the next next lens. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you'll see it's quite a step up in size, also a bit of uh, for the weight. Um, but then again, you have 200 millimeters more in the focal length. 
but the same aperture. Yeah, and this makes a huge difference because if you would add a 1.4 extender to the 600 millimeter f6.3, you get uh, 840 millimeters, but at f, uh, f9. And yeah, it's a whole aperture of one f-stop of difference and you really feel this in the background yeah. separation. But then again, you kind of have to keep in mind you just you're carrying a, a much larger lens yeah or if you just go on a hiking trip you maybe don't plan to take much maybe i don't know you go with family or friends you don't want to take a huge lens this can also be nice because it easily fits yeah so you have used this i think mainly for a uh, griffin vultures right yes Last exactly year. so i've used it mostly for like alpine birds mainly because it's so light so it's 2.4 kilograms so even though it's quite large if I just carry this lens, it's still really light. Yeah. So, yes, if you hike up like a, a whole mount, mountain, this one is really nice because then you can still carry like a wide angle and don't break your back basically. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for, for me, it's it's I've, I'm really happy with this lens to to for some for, for some purposes at least because okay. sometimes it's just a bit too too much of focal length basically. Yeah, this is uh, it's my concern. I have not tried it yet. I would really like to test it soonish um, to do a proper review about it. But I feel like for as my go-to lens 800 seems like a lot. As you mentioned, depending on the type of birds, especially alpine birds, it can be a bit shyer. It's of course nice, but um, I would, I'm not sure if I would get this as my only lens for my style of shooting because sometimes I even feel my 600 millimeters already too much. One thing I think we should note uh, mention is the price. I think it's uh, around 6,800, 6,900. So like only 1,200 um, euros more expensive than the 600, 6.3. Um, so of the, out of the two, which one would you choose? If you need to choose between these two from this middle price category. I think it's, it's kind of difficult to answer basically yeah. uh, because both have their their like large advantages over the other one. I guess for me, I would prefer actually the, the 800 millimeters because I don't really care that much about the size. Yeah. I'm used to carrying large backpacks. So for me, I prefer the more focal length over the, the, like the agility of the lens. But then again, I would have like a large gap missing like on the mm -hmm. lower end so I would need kind of another lens. Yeah, something from, yeah. If I only can like choose one lens for everything it would be the 600 millimeters. Yeah. Yeah for me I mean if I'm allowed to take my to have my 600 millimeter in general as a second lens I would definitely well take another 600 millimeter but the 6.3 just maybe for these occasions where I don't want to carry too much, where I don't have much space in my backpack with the tent and everything already using some space. And it's just for the rare chance that you might see some wildlife, but you're not planning to do it. Um, because I feel like the 800 millimeters is almost too close to the 600 I already have. But it maybe depends on what you like to shoot, which other lenses you already have. So then let's go to the really expensive stuff. Um, you actually own this lens. You have the your own version with the yeah. camouflage cover over there. So maybe you want to start. Yeah. So I think like I guess we could just basically talk about both lenses because they share quite a lot. Um, I mean, like starting from here. Maybe starting. This is the four hundred two point eight, and this is the yeah, six hundred four. Yeah, I mean that, that would be a great start. Noticed, so. Yeah. Uh, thank you. But like starting from the bayonet all the way up to here, the Kind of the same lenses i mean from the outside at least so you have like a drop-in filter you have the in built-in teleconverter a 1.4 teleconverter um it's just uh, the 600 millimeter is a bit longer and a bit heavier yeah i mean both of them offer like top of the line image quality yeah. they are for what kind of lens they are they're actually rather lightweight if we compare it like to the last generation um and what I really love is this uh, integrated tele extender that you can just switch in and out, especially for, for uh, flight shots or something that I have like a seagull that is perched. I shoot with 840 millimeters and basically when it starts taking off, I just switch it out and I have a bit more room for, yeah, when it extends the, 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 the wings, this makes a huge difference and you, I don't, you don't know, you don't want to know how much I have 
lost images because I had the extender in with my other lens and it's fixed and I cannot take I mean, it out. You basically have like two lenses in yeah. one and they are both like prime lenses so you can expect like stellar image quality even if you have like the, the te teleconverter in. Yeah, I think the advantage also here is that this tele extender is, um, I mean, it's made for this specific exactly, lens. Yeah. Um, whereas the normal tele extender, it fits for all lenses. It does a great job. I mean, as we mentioned, they still work well, but here it's just optimized a tiny yeah, bit more. I think it's also like the, the AF, so the autofocus, it just works really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's insanely fast without the teleconverter. It's still insanely fast with the teleconverter. I, I, I mean, there's maybe like a small difference. If you photograph like uh, Alpine Swifts, for example, I, I felt like a small difference, but still, I, I mean, I'm happy to use it with the teleconverter. Oh yeah, totally. I don't think so much about the loss yeah. in image quality or autofocus. I think more about, um, and we maybe should have mentioned this already with the 800 millimeter 6.3, like if you have some heat, uh, how is it called, heat distortion in yeah. the air, if you have too much room between your and your animal, and uh, especially on a warm summer day over a like concealed or uh, like some pavement or some roads or some even dirt roads, actually can be over meadows, it can be over everything. Yeah, I mean, it's just like at, at further distances, you're just running into problems yeah. with heat haze. So, I mean, that's not, on the lens itself, it's, that's just uh, physics, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I also like prefer the 400 millimeters, millimeters just in general, because I don't really run into this problem as much as with the 600 millimeters. Mainly if you use start using the extenders, yeah. right? I mean, I use this uh, with the internal 1.4 and an external 1.4. So then, if you once you mount the external 1.4, you can switch between 840 millimeter f 5.6 and a 1200 millimeter f8. So I used it in southern France for taking pictures of some songbirds. Um, it was the yellow wagtail, um, so still a rather small bird, so the shooting distance is not too large. It was in the morning, I would say 20 minutes after sunrise, and it worked quite well, but otherwise, um, and I had this with other 600 millimeters as well, I'm a bit careful about adding the two times extender just because 1200 millimeters, it's a lot of focal length. Yeah, so actually, like uh, talking about the, the two times teleconverter, you could actually mount another teleconverter behind the, the built in teleconverter, so you have two, and so stack teleconverters. I have to say, there's, there's like a, a bit of a drop then in image quality, just because like two teleconverters, that's a lot of modi modification uh, on the light, but still, it's usable in certain conditions. Uh, more like for creative purposes again uh, not just to like reach further but to maybe get like a detail image but uh, still I think that's also a thing to just uh, think about you have like not just two lenses if you add like a teleconverter you kind of have like four different lenses uh, which is yeah just adds to the flexibility of this lens I think one important thing is um Many people ask me, or maybe also you at workshops, like they want to upgrade to one of these lenses and they're not sure which. And I asked myself the same question when I bought my new lens. In the end, I went for a 600 millimeter f4. You went for the 400 to 8. Um, is it just the greater flexibility in the end? So I think it's mostly about like which animals I photograph. Mm. Uh, but then again, it was quite interesting, like uh, this summer, I was uh, also in south of France and I've had both of these lenses with me, both on the set 9, so I could kind of compare which one I've, I, I used more. And actually I've used the, the 600 much more than the 400, so I basically like 400 on one side, 600 on the other hand. And it's just with the 600, you get more opportunities to take images because you can just reach a bit further. But then again, if like the animal is more cooperative, if, it, if you're lucky and the animal comes, comes close towards you, the 400 just gives you that, that look that the 600 can't create. I guess, especially in these open landscapes that you have in Southern France, where you can sometimes include a bit more of the sky yeah. and yeah, totally. It's different. just also like the, the bokeh 
I think it just looks a bit nicer because you have a working distance of two and a half meters. I think for this one, for the 600, you can, you can cheat and look. <laughs> I think it was 4.3 or 4, yeah, 4.3. So not at minus 4.2. Yeah, so it's just a bit closer, uh, the working distance with the 400 to 8. And you can kind of create like this really strong bokeh. Yeah, especially in back late, right? Yeah, so for me, I find that quite interesting and I felt like the, the images I really like, they are more on the on the 400 millimeters than at yeah. 600. That's why personally I prefer the 400 millimeters, but it also really depends on, on which animals you, you actually photograph, I think. Yeah, I was only allowed to take one of these lenses to southern France. I was a few weeks before you, so I had the same 600 millimeter. I guess it was really the same model. And I think I used I was quite happy with the 600 millimeter most of the time, um, but sometimes it's also hard to tell when I would have used less di focus distance, uh, focal distance. I had some occasions where I used my 100 to 500 actually, and when I used this one, I went much shorter. I actually went more in the range of 200, 300 millimeters really to show more of the environment. And I would say, roughly speaking, I think in southern France, I was using maybe 60% the 600 millimeter let's say 35 to 38%, um, 840 millimeters, and then for these 2%, I used the 1,200 millimeters. Okay. Um, but I guess it really depends what kind of animals you take pictures of, uh, which uh, kind of style of shooting you have. I realized when I was in Costa Rica in um, autumn, I had my 600 millimeter f4. Overall, I was quite happy. I also used it with the extender, but there was also some situation. I was so happy I could use the 7200 yeah. just because in, I felt like, especially in America, um, the birds are just in some places much tamer than here in Europe. And then you can do more with your subject. But if you are more for going for shy birds that are also happen to be small, I think here, of course, you can add the extender here. But the quality of the 600 millimeter without the extender will be better than this one with the yeah. extender. Or the 600 millimeter with the 1.4 will be better than the 400 with the 2 times extender. So I guess you trade a bit of flexibility for reach and you probably just need to figure out for your, on your own, for yourself, what is more important to you in the end. Because exactly. price-wise, actually the difference is not so expensive. I mean, it's 2,000 euros, but I mean, at this it's price like 15 point... 15% <laughs> or what? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this point, I think it's... It's not really a difference anymore. I mean, if, if you think about it, the difference is kind of like another lens. I mean, if you if you want, you can like have a 400 to 8 and a 70 to 200. And the ironic thing is, with a 600, you're more yeah, so likely you need would a need it <laughs> rather on this side. So yeah. yeah, but I guess like at this price point, it's not really a concern yeah. anymore. So obviously, these lenses are not ours. So thanks to Nikon for providing us uh, for this video with these lenses. Um, we really hope that we could give you some uh, relevant insights and help you for kind of a recommendation which lens to buy for which kind of scenario. Um, I think one important thing is maybe if you're not sure, also check in Lightroom or whichever program you use, select your favorite images from last year, maybe your top 20, 30 images and check with which focal length you have shot them. As Nicolas mentioned before, uh, maybe you realize that um, you shoot more with a longer focal length, but the images you really like are taken with a shorter focal length. Additionally, we're also happy to answer uh, to you in the comments if you have some questions that we didn't cover here in the video. And finally, if you want to support both Nicolas and me, we put some affiliate links below. Um, if you buy over these links, you don't pay more, but we get a small, um, we got some money back for the effort of this video. And if you also want to see the images of Nicolas that he took like when he was on his assignment with 180 to 600 and 70 to 800, uh, I put the link below as well. Uh, I made some reviews about quite some of these lenses, so check them out on my channel. And thanks Nicolas for being here and providing us with your insights that you had. Yeah, thanks for inviting me and uh, hope to be back soon. Yes, for sure.